Georgia Tech has not lost to Georgia State since 1998. As the Tampa is controlled by the Yellow Jackets and must play some basketball. One change to the Georgia Tech starting lineup. Aisha Wong Adonaz medically unavailable today. Kira Dawn gets her third start of the season. And here is Dawn pulling the trigger, knocking down the three. Well, that's one way to reintroduce herself. Dawn, all she's done is scored 20 points in that first half. <laughs> Take a look at your Georgia State starters. Tolliver, Merrill, Phillip, Williams, and the very talented freshman Crystal Henderson, second on the team, 10 and a half points per game as Merrill cashes in underneath. Georgia State coming off a 12-day break for exams. The step back three, Augusta Naita. She's shooting 42% from three this year. Off the mark with the offensive rebound to Dunn. Now Noero from the mid-range down the well. Yeah, Noero's first career double-double. The sophomore from Gijon, Spain. Henderson on the attack, gets a seam, gets the finish. And she's lightning quick. She's not afraid to go to the hole, and we see it in that last possession. Off the backdoor feed, it's done. Off the dish from Noero. See what they can get open. Make Georgia State's defense have to work. There's some quick passing and open. Morgan splashes down the three. And we see right here, Tony Morgan, she gets her feet set left wide open. And, oh, she can score. You know, it's one thing. They have to stop our penetration. They're not even looking for that outside shot. But that's big if she's knocking down the three this afternoon. Yellow Jackets leading score better than 15 points a contest. But Tolliver answers right back. Three-point shot. And then Tolliver comes back and repays the favor with the three of her own. Hot shooting star for both teams. Augusta Nate catch and shoot pure. That's not too shabby for the uh, sophomore for Georgia Tech, but she was. Rusna Augusta Nate is two of nine from three in that win over Mercer at center. Three point percentage plummeting to 43%, and the bank is open from deep. Maya <laughs> Williams that time. Three point extravaganza in this first quarter. Everybody's letting it fly. Oh, Kara Dunn, textbook spin and a chance for a three-point play. Play and some work down low. And we see it early. The footwork is there. She takes the contact and she's able. Henderson to stop and pop off, blasting in. Man, that's nasty by the freshman. Ooh. Crystal Henderson from just up the road in Marietta, Georgia. Dawn, good from the mid-range. Both teams are stroking smokes. Tolliver off the screen. A spin in deep. Contested well by Dunn. You see Blackshear really working down low, trying to get some positioning. Oh, this might be Kara Dunn's day. How about 5 of 5 from the field? And we see it right here. Kara Dunn gets her feet set, playing not even the first minute of the first game of the season, and then having to come back. But we're seeing it this afternoon. She's getting that rhythm back. Oh, the three right back by Tolliver. Speaking of players who are finding their touch again from deep. On the three. And Tolliver is the second one. We talked about it, but she came in. Georgia Tech, they got to move the ball in their offensive sets. And score in transition. This is a team that likes to run, has the speed, and can score in transition. Gordon with the rebound and the run out. She thrives in the open floor. Nuero the trailer from three. Good. Kira Dunn at 5'11", very good rebounder. Tony Morgan, an outstanding rebounder for her size. Follows Jocelyn loose on the dribble drive from Tolliver, cleaned up by Williams. Patience Williams with the stick back. Guido throws through the trap. Tic-tac-toe passing. Augusta Knight lined it up, got her own miss. Dumps off to Dunn, and Dunn continues to... Augusta Knight following that offensive rebound and getting that assist. The backdoor feed and the finish by Kaylee Addy. 26-19, 90 seconds remaining first quarter. We talked about Georgia State's need to limit Georgia Tech to one-shot possessions. Well, even in that 73-60 win over Mercer on Tuesday. Georgia Tech out to its largest first quarter lead. Merrill posting on Blackshear. Off pass and in. Morgan waves for a screen, receives one from Blackshear. Reads the pick and roll. Blackshear stop and pop down the well. Ah, oh, I love that. But Georgia Tech's had some second chance opportunities early in this one. Oliver slides around the screen, gets the step on Augusta Knights and no good. Merrill gets the miss and sticks it in. Had their high school jerseys retired the same day. She jumps the passing lane, gets the steal. Wriggling in deep. Throws to Phillips. She can't clear the shot. 
Now Tolliver from deep, and she splashes it down. Opportunity to score a bucket. McConnell Tolliver had two made threes all year. She's three of four from deep. And all of a sudden, the lead is shrunk to six, make it back out to eight off the finish from Blackshear. Augusta Knight to arranging in the corner. Beats Thomas Harris, straight on, got it. And Georgia Tech has dominated the boards as well. Another mid-range from Thomas Harris, same spot, same result. And it's a great career or field to go into, so I applaud it. If she can make it through law school, you can make it through a lot. Following that lineage of Hoopers turned <laughs> lawyers, such as the woman to my right, Fallon Stokes. The widow finds Dunn leaking out, and the lay-in for Kira Dunn. And that's a no-no, especially when you have your full-court pressure on. Was earlier this season, 22, and a loss to Nebraska. And he fires across the paint, shot blocked by Thomas Harris. Georgia State shot 56% in the first quarter, just 3 of 14 here in the second. Counted, and the foul off the pull-up, Tolliver. Able to muscle that one in until of a chance to complete the three-point play. And one, but you talk about Georgia Tech was playing great defense switching. It's a close call there, and it's athletic. It can jump out the gym, so if she's in the lane, she's going to give herself a, a good opportunity at scoring a basket. This fires on both free throws. The offensive rebound and the stick back and one, the Asian Thomas Harris. Two are just fearless, and you see it right here. She's battling down low to get that offensive rebound. Uses those arms well to create some space. Back with a chance for a 50-piece in the first half. Pick and pop three, Blackshear. Around and out, offensive rebounded Morgan. Sticks it in, and it takes us to the end of the first half. Gets the foul call, and Georgia State maintains the possession. Inbound pass was deflected by Dunn. Loose, still with it, Augusta Naita. Almost overran that. A chance for Georgia Tech to set up the possession. Dawn lines it up, knocks it down. Oh, splash some holy water on Kira Dunn. Burn some sage because she is locked in. And it's a new career high 23 for Kira Dunn. Let's draw that foul, but we're going to see Kira Dunn right here. Gets her feet set wide open. They're good and just going with the offense and playing through it, not forcing any shots this afternoon. Morgan no good with the left hand. Rebound Merrill. Numbers for Georgia State. Williams with a stop and pop down the well. Blackshear back in, replacing the Asian Thomas Harris. Slipped into Blackshear. Grabs her own and sticks it in. The capitalize and knocking down the jump shot. Avoided the gift. Done another one. Well, like you said, another one on screens. And that, that seems to work wonders for this defense for Georgia Tech. Augusta Knight to pleading for it. Finally dished to her by Morgan. And Augusta Knight just says, that's why. <laughs> You see it right here. Nice swing pass by Morgan. The defense was totally shifted, and Augusta Nathan was wide open. And that's a fourth on Christina Bryant. She will stay in for the moment. The widow down the shoot, tipped away by Williams. Patience Williams, the USF transfer, and it slapped right out of her hands by Noedo. Morgan lowering the shoulder, banks it in, counted, and a foul. At the rim, and looked like Georgia Tech, they turned it over and got it right back, and Tony Morgan takes the hit, and but it gives you another ball handler to break the press, and a, a, a good passer. Morgan suctions in the rebound. Flips to Dunn, step back. Pure water, Tone Kira Dunn. This is the player that Coach Fortner knew she had in Kira Dunn, and the expectations for her this season for this team, because they're gonna need her to score four points. I don't know if she's gonna get this hot every game, it's been some shots going up, but Georgia Tech has just been shooting the basketball extremely well. Georgia State has only gotten three steals. Oh, nice speed underneath to Williams. The vision by Phillip. It's 16 steals in that route of Western Carolina. Only three as we approach the three and a half minute mark of the third quarter. Well, Georgia Tech, they knew it was going to be important that they take care of the basketball. That was a nice three. She just was able to knock down. Georgia Tech was last in the ACC last year in three-point percentage. They've got the fast break. Johnson with the wraparound. Dawn and give Kara Dawn. The scoring binge continues for Dawn as she goes to work. A touch pass to Johnson. A one more to Carter for a corner three. Great ball rotation regardless. Blackster got her stick back blocked. Down to Dawn. She is clobbered. Little zone look. 
Lob to Blackshear, creating space off the top of the backboard. Good job by Georgia State to surround that lob. Of course, a tough shot from Blackshear. They work it. And a three-pointer good. Kaylee Addy. Allow Georgia State to get back in their defense, try and slow Georgia Tech up a bit. And Addy's had limited attempts from three this year, but she's been accurate. Now 7 of 13, Augusta Naita has also been accurate. Final minute of the third quarter. Johnson drives and dishes. Dunn gets the flyby, doesn't attack. Great entry, Johnson to Thomas Harris. Yeah, that was a seed that she threw to DeAsia Thomas Harris, who's now in double figures herself with the left. In deep once more, and she finishes with the left. I mean, she got out there, got the steal. Couldn't knock down the three, but she just gave us a glimpse of how quick she's going to be in the Sun Belt this season. Thomas had that pass hang up on her knee. Turnover. Crystal Henderson hasn't quite materialized today. She's missed all five of her three-point attempts, two of ten from the floor. But she has that. Settling for that three-point shot kind of early in the shot clock rather than moving the ball. That's been working for them all afternoon. Tolliver cleans up the miss and finishes. It's difficult for her to score and catch in the paint. And that's how they get called for a foul. First foul of the quarter against the Panthers. Done. Why not? How about 33? Someone needs to guard her and find her quick. Catch and shoot by Ziak. She strokes it from the corner. Dunn takes the handoff. The crossover. Takes the bump. Blackshear follows it up and draws the foul. Gets her teammates back so they can set up. Dunn doesn't get the bounce. It's the highest scoring game by Yellow Jacket since the 2019 season. Tolliver diving in, and she scores. Henderson going to work. Got it smothered. Stuffed by Wilson, deflects right down to Henderson. It looks like she might be breaking that this afternoon. She's extremely close. Well, I regret to inform you that with that last field goal, how about that stop and go and the runner off glass and one from Henderson. That's what I like to see from these freshmen this year. They just come out here to play basketball. They don't know about losses. Run was open momentarily. Cuts across the paint. How about that inside spin? Two more from Kara Dunn. She is in her bag. Yeah, Nisha's a good friend of mine, and I know what she could do back in her prime. How about 39? The onslaught continues, and I think this crowd realizing it. For Georgia Tech this afternoon. She has really put in work start to finish. She came out hot. There's a bump and the finish. Haley Addy taking the harm. Yeah, she put on a show, but we, you know, we talked about it. Won't on and I is a big piece to this roster, especially defensively. Now Johnson kind of stuffed. Diving in. It stays with Tech. Five to shoot. Carter with the shot clock at five, snaps it out top, and entry. And on the turn, Thomas Harris lost it, and that's a shot clock violation on the Jackets. Another big in-state showdown looming later next week against the Georgia Bulldogs in Athens. But Tech takes care of business on this Sunday afternoon at McCambus Pavilion.